welcome back everybody to our intermediate and advanced civil 3d training video series in this next number of videos and i'm not sure how many it's going to be five to ten videos we are going to take an in-depth advanced look at creating a residential subdivision corridor we're going to go through everything from creating the main road alignments we're going to create our offset alignments any knuckles or cul-de-sacs we're going to take a look at creating some detailed assemblies for our roads based on city guidelines and standards. We're going to create intersections and create the corridor itself, including all the alignments, profiles, assemblies, corridors, all the bells and whistles to go with it. Now, unfortunately, I am not able to share the underlying data I have here as it's controlled by the city where I live and I'm not allowed to share it. However, I will try and go slow enough here that you can attribute these same steps to your potential project. Or if you're, if you're drawing this up just for practice, download some data from uh, the US government or even, even Canada has some free surface data really, uh, you can acquire online. And just a simple Google search will have that. Now I do have a few things already set up here for this corridor for us to build. I have mainly my center line alignments. So I have a few of those already in the drawing here. I have one here, one here, one here, my three main roads. So these are my center line alignments. I also have the existing legal from the city itself so I can define the outer extents of my subdivision. So I have the outer extents of my subdivision here, uh, the south end of my my site here, the bottom will be a road here. And then I've, I've divided the inside into some little areas here for eventually when I do my lot grading. And from all of this, I then define my, my road center lines. So I'm going to freeze all that information off and just have my my pre-drawn line work. Another piece of pre-drawn line work that I have already derived. So I have my road center line here. I've also offset it by the lane width according to a residential road through the city. This is offset by 4.25 meters. That is the width of, of my residential road. Now, when it comes into designing a, a knuckle, there is no set radius for the knuckles. It's it's on a case by case basis. What looks good, um, what works, depending on the angles of the roads. And uh, two very important pieces of information in a subdivision design. Well, three. We have road center line. We have the edge of asphalt, and we have our edge of right of way. Now. Edge of asphalt, a very important, uh, important number. We need to know where that is. So when they're paving and doing quantities, but also the property line. Now, depending on the jurisdiction, depending on the city, you might have numbers to edge of asphalt. You might have numbers to the right of way. Uh, the city where I live tends to give um, numbers to the edge of right of way. And you'll have to do a little bit of math to figure out where the edge of asphalt is. It, it's all dependent on different pieces of information. So if I just quickly go to a residential road, residential street, where I live, and we'll rotate the page a little bit and take a look at the road I'm going to be creating. So the 16 meter wide road, eight and a half meter wide asphalt. So the entire right of way will be 16 meters wide. However, the asphalt is going to be eight and a half meters wide and every other piece of information we need for a corridor design would be on this document when we're creating our assemblies. And also we're not just going to be doing a residential road, we're gonna be doing a slightly bigger road. Uh, it's called a primary collector where I live and it has one or two lanes and possibly bike lanes, possibly parking lanes. And we'll get into that when, when we get there. So the, again, the pieces of information I have already set up are my road center lines. Where are my road center lines going to be? And there's three of them. I've also created my offset alignments or offset polylines for when we need to do a knuckle and a cul-de-sac. And again, these are just based on the edge of asphalt. Now, as I said before, there is no set 
there is no set um, radiuses for these as every every curve, uh, every road is going to be different. Sometimes you might want a, a bigger knuckle. Sometimes you might want a smaller knuckle. And it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So just for this example, the three radiuses that I have on my edge of, on my property line uh, is 18, 18, and yes, I've got a ton of decimals, 18, which means the edge of asphalt, we take 18 minus the 3.75, we get 21.75, 14.25, 16.25, 21.75 cul-de-sacs again um, there really isn't a set radius for these it all depends on the road width it depends on what kind of cul-de-sac it is if it's at the end of a residential road or if it's at the end of say a larger road uh, an entrance street or whatnot but my radiuses so the edge of asphalt will be 21 edge of um, property line 17.25 the main bulb radiuses are 10.5 for the edge of asphalt, 14.25 for the property line. And then the ones on these sides will just be the reverse. So 21 or 20.99999. And then 17 and a quarter, 17.25 on this side as well. So having these set up beforehand, and again, it's just simple polylines, arcs, arcs and lines and turned into a polyline. They need to be one continuous polyline, so when we make them alignment, we can eat more easily control them. Now I'm going to create my alignments here. So under the alignments, we are going to create alignment from a polyline. I have the polylines drawn. I find it easier to draw the polylines beforehand and create alignments from just plain old polylines. Now I'm going to start with my, my main road uh, into the subdivision. So I'll select the main road, I'll hit enter. Civil 3D then asks me to select an uh, press enter to accept the alignment direction or to reverse it. Now when we're creating corridors, when we're creating assemblies, really anything we're doing in Civil 3D, travel direction or the direction of the alignment, the direction things are going, absolutely 100% matters. So I'm going to look for this little gray arrow. And it's going to tell me that my alignment is going to start at zero over here and the stations are going to increase until the end of it at the right. I am happy with this left to right direction as we generally read a page from left to right. And when we're putting it in a drawing or plan profile drawing, left is zero, right is the whatever number it ends up being. So left to right, I'm going to hit enter to accept it. Now, as we're starting a very detailed corridor, I'm not just going to hit enter here. I'm going to look at all the options. I'm going to pay attention to exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to create alignment from an object and I'm going to name it. Now, this just happens to be uh, 64th Avenue extension in my city. So I'm going to name it exactly what it is. It is uh, uh, probably a 500 to 1000 meter extension piece to an existing road called 64th Avenue. Now name your objects what they are and when we get into the assemblies we are going to be doing a whole plethora of naming. So 64th Avenue extension is the name. It is a center line alignment. I'm just going to start station everything probably from 0 plus 000. zero, zero. Um, however, if you need to specify different starting stations, it is much easier to do it now. And it's as simple as typing in the new starting station. So I uh, say I wanted to start this at 2000. I would do it here. It's easier to do it now than fix it later. So starting station is zero plus zero, zero, zero. I'm going to quickly go to my design criteria. And this road from the city is 60 kilometers uh, an hour. So I'll just type 60 and hit tab. Now, if you're in the US, some of these design based criteria files, turn them on if you want. It will monitor, uh, monitor your alignments. However, it could provide warnings and errors if you don't meet some standards. Uh, I find these more, more accurate when it comes to a highway design as opposed to a subdivision design. As I'm in Canada, I'm not going to turn any of this design criteria stuff on. I'm just going to monitor it myself. Flipping back to the general tab, site. 
I don't want to put my alignments on sites, but where this could be handy is when you are, are trying to subdivide your area down. I like to keep my sites very separate. I don't want alignments interfering with any potential feature lines. I don't want alignments interfering with other related things that go on sites because that is probably the number one reason that Civil 3D crashes and corrupts your drawings is the use of sites. So I'm gonna leave that on none. None of my alignments are going to be on a site. My alignment style, I'm just gonna use the normal center line. It's going to make a layer for me. My label set, again, most of this stuff can be changed afterwards. So the style, the layer, the label set. Uh, I'm not going to add curves between tangents. I find that this just introduces problems and tends to ca uh, can cause Civil 3D to crash if you select this and turn it on and it tries to make those curves, the Civil 3D could crash. Now, there's erase existing entities. I tend to erase the existing underlying entities when I do my work. However, feel free to uncheck it so it leaves that underlying polyline in case you need to delete your alignment, in case you need to go back. However, I'm going to leave it selected for this. So when that's done, I'll hit OK. Give Civil 3D a second here to build the... Uh, build the alignment. Another thing, I'm going to go turn off auto save. So under options, uh, the open and save tab, I'm just going to turn off auto save. Now I tend to turn it off because I I manually save every five or ten minutes anyways, and uh, in my past experiences, I have found that when you're in a, in a dialog box for five or ten minutes, and we just saw it right there, Civil 3D saved as soon as we clicked OK, which made the alignment take a little bit longer to build. And it also performed a save at that exact same time. So when we hit OK, it's trying to run both those commands, which could lead into crashing and corruption. So I tend to turn auto save off. If it's your your safety net, leave it on. Um, my personal thinking, turn, turn it off because it's trying to do both things at once. And when we're into more uh, advanced corridor related stuff, we're creating the corridor itself. We're in a dialog box for 30, 40 minutes, setting up all our targets and our offsets and our widths and everything. It's trying to autosave and run all those commands at the exact same time. It could end up in, in some trouble. So I have my one alignment made. I'm going to go and create my other alignment. So my internal subdivision road, I'm going to create alignment from the objects again. So alignments create alignment from a polyline. I'll select my polyline, I'll hit enter, and I'll look at the alignment direction. Now this one is the majority of the alignment is left to right. I have it going from the bottom left all the way around to the bottom right. I'm going to keep the direction of the left to right. So I'm looking for this arrow, it's pointing to the right and I'll be happy with that, I'll hit enter. This one is going to be I'm just going to call it Teradale Way. It's a center line alignment. Design criteria, this is a 50 kilometer an hour road. I'll leave all these options as per previous and hit OK. Create another alignment. Taking a look at this one now, this one goes north-south and as we, as we create alignment from polyline, I'm going to hit enter and I see that the arrow is pointing down. Now this comes into, again, how you read a drawing. We read a drawing from left to right. However, this alignment is not left to right, it's up to down. So now we need to look at our north arrow and where is, where is north on a page? North is pointing up in this case. However, when we put it on a drawing, north should either point up or to, uh, to the left. So up or to the left 90 degrees so when we rotate that page if we have a physical hard copy and we rotate it we want north to be pointing uh, some form of up so if i place this on a drawing we ha will have zero over here and about 111 if I rotate this 90 degrees so north is at the left my zero will read from left to right so your alignments, direction, uh, general rule of thumb, left to right, zero 
uh, zero should be on the left, 100 should be on the right, or the alignment direction should be top to bottom. General, just a very general vague rule of thumb. Again, zero to 111, left to right, top to bottom. So I'm going to accept that pointing down as my direction, and I'm going to name this Teradale Way, and hit OK. So I have my three main road alignments in there. I'm just deleting those uh, labels that I made. I'm also going to create the offset alignments while I'm at it for my knuckles and cul-de-sacs. So these three cyan colored lines will be my offset alignments. They will be my target alignments that I want Civil 3D to target and stretch my corridors to. And again, keep in mind that these are your edge of asphalt. So under alignments, create alignment from polyline. I'm going to take a look at this. Now, to keep my head on straight, I generally match the direction of this alignment to the direction of this alignment. So I want it going from zero here, in incrementing stations to the top right. So I'm going to reverse that. So I'll hit R for reverse. I'm going to name this West Knuckle Edge of Pavement or Edge of Asphalt. No design speed needed on this one. And I'm definitely going to deselect the add curves and we'll hit OK. And we have 0 to 44. Another alignment create from polyline. This one again follows the direction, so it starts at, it'll start at zero here, increment to 44 or a different number at the top, uh, bottom right. I'll accept that direction. I'm going to name this East Knuckle Edge of Asphalt, and we'll hit OK. And then finally, create the alignment on my cul-de-sac. Now this one, um, the direction doesn't necessarily matter. It only really matters when you go to make your corridor and how you want it to increment. However, I'm going to start with zero here and we're going to increment it to the positive as we go around. And this will be my cul-de-sac edge of asphalt. And we'll hit OK. So we have just quickly created one, two, three, four, five, six alignments here. In our drawing, we see that they are all under our center line alignments. I have some duplicates apparently that I will need to go and take a look at. Oh, okay, I named this Teradale Way, where I should have actually named it Teradale Place. And then we'll have to, uh, this is actually a good exercise, so Teradale Place. The layer it's also on is C Align Teradale Way. So we're going to have to make a, a separate layer. I like everything to be on its own separate layer. I already have a Teradale place as I had deleted all my alignments previously. So I'm just going to switch this one to Teradale way place and the labels that go with it. C label align Teradale place. Now naming everything. Uh, keeping keeping your drawing organized, keeping your head on straight, keeping everything in its own place. Name your items, name your objects, make sure your, your things are named properly. I have everything here named separately. All six alignments are here. As we make more and more alignments, so when we start creating the intersections, we're going to get six or eight alignments per intersection. So we're going to add another 24 up to 24 alignments in our drawing. So name your items, name your objects, take that extra second to do your due diligence, and it's going to help you in the long run.